So you want to build a phone tracker app that works on both Android and iOS. That's exactly what we're going to cover in this video. But first, if you're new here, my name is Septum and I make YouTube videos to teach you how to code. So if you want to level up your coding skills, click the subscribe button and the bell notification to stay up to date on the videos put out. Let's start by creating a folder for our project. I'm using the terminal inside VS Code to do so. Create a folder named Phone Tracker, then create a server folder inside for our Node.js server. Use npm init to create a package.json that we will use to import our Node.js packages. You can customize it if you want, but I'm just going to leave it blank for now. Now, open the project directory using your IDE. Make sure to navigate to the server directory, then add the following packages by running npm install. Wait for it to install, then add the start script to the package.json file. Using Nodmon will speed up our development as it will act like hot reload in Flutter. Now let's create a file named authentication token JS. Start by including JSON Web Token module, then create an authentication token function. It will take three variables: request, response, and the next. Let's get the auth header from our request headers, then get the token from the auth header. Check if the token is null, then return the status code 401 in the response. If we have a token, then we pass it to the JSON Web Token Verify function, along with the access token secret that we're going to create later. Check for any errors that would mean the token is invalid. So we return a 403 unauthorized status code. If the token is valid, we send the request user to the user we got from the verify function and call next. Finally, let's export this module and create our environment variable. Open your terminal and type this command or copy it from the written tutorial on my blog. Now paste it in the .env file and save it. As you can see, I've made the mistake of creating my files outside the server directory, so I'm going to move them back in. Now let's create the database script. I'm going to use SQLite 3 in the verbose mode. Create a constant DB source and give it a file name. Declare a DB variable, use the database function of SQLite 3 and pass it the database source. Then check for errors. If everything goes to plan, we should now be connected to the local database. So we can create the user table with a nodal increment integer a text username and password, as well as a timestamp. Since we are here, let's create the logs table. We need a latitude and longitude numeric values, a username, and a timestamp text. We can now create the index.js. That's going to be our main app script. Let's start by importing everything we need, such as express, bcrypt, JSON web token, the database and authentication token scripts that we just created. Also, require and configure .env. Set up the Express app to use JSON as a middleware. Now, create the log route to respond to GET requests. Log requests must be verified using the authentication token module. Use JWT to decode the token and run a database query that selects all the logs for our current user and send it back. Otherwise, if there are any errors, return a JSON formatted error. We need to handle POST requests to the log route. The process is pretty much the same, other than the parameters that now include the user's latitude and longitude. This time, we run a database query that inserts the parameters we talked about in the logs table. If successful, we send a 200 status code, otherwise, we send the error. We're making good progress. Next, we need to create the login route to handle POST requests. Start by getting the username and password from the request body. Then, run a database query to get the user data where the username equals the one sent in the request body. We do some error handling. Then, we use bcrypt to compare the password from the request and the one saved in the database. If they match, we create a token using JSON Web Token and return it in JSON format. The sign-up process is similar. First, we prepare the SQL query, then create a user object and give it the username, password, and timestamp values while making sure to hash the planned user password. Then, we run the database query and check if everything went well. We generate an access token and send it as a response. All is left now is to call the lesson method on the port 3000. Save the changes and the server should start. Now, the server is ready. 
a new user can authenticate and start sending coordinates in real time, and the server will save the data in the database. Then, the user can log in using the master app and will have access to the logged data. Stick around to learn how to build those apps for both Android and iOS. That's it for today. Make sure to follow the link in the description to visit my website for the written tutorial and more awesome mobile development tutorials. Now click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell if you don't want to miss on upcoming content.